With AI technology, you can now easily transform your ordinary images into stunning designs. Hey, it's Mia with Design. In today's video, I'll show you how to effortlessly stylize your images using Design's image to image tool. I'll also teach you how to compose your own unique scenes and generate beautiful images on the Design platform. Plus, I'll share some tips on image style transfer across different use cases. By the end of the video, you'll be transforming images like a pro. Click the link below log into Design AI, and let's get started. Open a new project and select the proper aspect ratio. Today, we're learning how to use the image to image feature to transform a reference image into different styles. First, we'll upload our reference image to the canvas by clicking this button. For this tutorial, I want to transform the style of this portrait of a beautiful woman. Now let's click on the image to image tool on the left to open the panel. Then click the style button. Here we can select a pre-trained style from the many styles available to apply to our image. On the left, we can click into different categories to narrow down the styles related to what we want to generate. If you want to see more about the style, just click the little eye icon on the thumbnail for more information. There are a lot of pretty cool styles we can choose from here. Let's try to cartoonize our image. Toon face seems to be the one I'm looking for. Let's give this one a try. Below that, we have the text prompt where we can describe what we want to see. The text prompt can influence the result a lot. You can type your own description if you're aiming for something specific. But here's the tip, we can use the auto prompt feature so the AI will automatically describe the image for us. Click the text so we can double check to make sure that the description matches what we want and then we can tweak the text prompt accordingly. I'm going to remove the color descriptors and the mention of dusk here to give the AI more creative freedom. On the style intensity, we can adjust how strongly the chosen style is applied to the image. The higher the value, the more elements of the style you'll see. The structure match adjusts how closely the generated image matches the composition and content structure of the original. The higher it is, the more it will look like your image. And there's a suggested range mark in yellow, which is usually a good starting point. Next up is color match, which I think is an underrated feature that's super useful in different scenarios. When we toggle it on, the generated image will try to match the colors of the original image. But if you want the AI to get creative with colors, you'd want to leave it off. Let's leave it off for our first generation to see how the AI interprets the colors on its own. Another incredibly useful feature is the face match toggle. When you turn it on, the AI will work to preserve the facial features of the human subjects in your image, up to four faces at a time. This is great if you want to create images of the same person in different styles or situation. We'll leave it off this time for comparison. I usually keep the high quality toggle on so the AI can generate images with enhanced details. It does consume more credits, but I find the improved quality worth it. Next, we can click on advanced to input negative prompts and fix the seat. The negative prompt box is where you can enter things you don't want to see in the image, such as distorted, low quality or pixelated. If you don't want certain objects to appear like cars, you can add that here too. And the C number is for you to fix the randomness of the output. So if you get a generation you really like and want to produce similar images, you can take its C number and input it here to generate similar results. Once we're done adjusting the prompts and settings, let's hit generate and see the magic happen. The results will show up in the results panel on the right. Hover over the images to preview the results. We can download it here or click the compare button on the image to compare it with the original on the canvas. These results have preserved the structural outline of the original reference, including the position, posture, and overall composition. They even capture subtle details we didn't specify like the perspective on the background, the style of the hair, and the look of the coat. Because the structure match scale was set pretty high, also, we can create more variations of one of the result by clicking the number corresponding to the image next to variation. Then a new set of results will be generated. So the face of the generated results don't look exactly like the girl because we didn't enable face match. Let's try again using the same style and keeping the structure and style influence the same. And this time we'll turn on both 
face match and color match to see the difference. With the color match and face match turned on, now these results are definitely more consistent to our original image. When we hold the compare button, we can see that the colors are more aligned with our original image thanks to the color match feature. And with face match, we can create the same person appearing in different outfits and settings. Here are some other styles I've experimented with on design. Just by using the many preset styles available, we can achieve some really interesting and high quality results. But what if you want a style that's not yet in the style library? In DDesign, we can easily import our own style and use it as a style reference. To do that, click the style button and at the top, you'll see two options, quick style and pro style. Quick style lets you instantly upload a single reference image to quickly capture its essence. While pro style allows you to upload multiple reference images in order to learn your style in greater detail but it takes longer to process. Let's try the quick style first. We can upload an image or choose one already on the canvas. I'm uploading this image that has a really cool style and I'm curious to see if it can transfer to my image. These results are even better than I expected. It transformed my images into a flat vector style, just like the reference. And the color theme has also been perfectly adopted, all from just one single image. To find the styles we've used or trained in the past, simply head back to style panel, look under my styles, and then we'll see the styles we've used here and we can reuse them anytime. Now let's try out the pro style for a more comprehensive and accurate style match. Let's click on the training guide to see what we need to do. So it's recommended to upload images with a consistent style, high resolution images, greater than 512 by 512 pixel, and multiple images between three to 10, got it. So I have these images that all feature graffiti elements, pink and yellow color theme, and bold black lines aligning the subjects. They're not exactly the same style throughout, but I'm hoping that AI can find a balance by learning from these images. Let's see what we get. It takes approximately 20 minutes for the training to complete, and we'll come back for it. Time's up. Let's apply the style we've just chained. So let's head over to my styles. And there it is, our newly trained style is here. Let's see what we've got. Here are the images transformed to the graffiti style. I think the results are pretty successful. They capture the essence of my training reference images with the graffiti elements, the color theme, and the bold black outlines. The AI did a great job balancing the different styles I provided. With Style Learner, now we can easily train our own unique style with just a handful of images on design. But that's not it. There are more we can do than just turning a single image into different designs. With the image to image feature, we can easily merge and combine different elements to create a new image in the style we choose on design. Let's open a new project. I'll be using the text to image tool to generate a few items I want to include in my composition. Let's generate the background, a palm tree, and the sports card. We can remove the backgrounds of the palm tree and the car with just one click. In the layer panel, we'll arrange the order of the layers by simply dragging and dropping them. Let's add a person to the scene. Remove the background. Looks like she's having a bad hair day. Let's fix that with Edit Cutout. While selecting the person, click on Edit Cutout. Using Erase, we can remove the unwanted parts. And when we switch to Restore, we can bring back any parts we want to keep. That looks better. We saved the hair. Click Done to finish the editing. I think many of the elements are not really facing the right direction. We can fix that by right-clicking while selecting the items and choosing Flip Horizontal to mirror the image. Then we can now put them in the right places. For the tree, let's add a bit of flare by tilting it. When selected, hover over the handle at the top until you see the rotation cursor. Hold the mouse button down and rotate the image to the desired angle. Now our composition is ready. Let's try applying the tune face style. Click Auto Prompt so the AI will describe what it sees on the canvas for us. 
Let's see if the text prompt is correct. Adjust the other settings as needed and click Generate. Let's try different styles. And here are the fantastic results with the different styles I've tried. Now we can apply what we've just learned in countless ways. Here are some popular use cases. Just like I demonstrated earlier, one of the most popular use cases is transforming human portraits into different styles. This is a fantastic way to create fun and unique avatars for your social media profiles or create a personalized gift for your friends and family. But it's not just for humans. We can also stylize our pets to create unique pet portraits. To make sure it still looks like your furry buddy, set the structure match to a higher value and make sure to toggle on color match to match their fur colors. We can also transform our logo into different styles for marketing purposes. You can experiment with various styles, but for this use case, you might find interesting options under logos and icons and material art. The style intensity and structure match settings are yours to play with. It depends on your specific needs. For more creative results, I usually turn off the color match and face match features. Additionally, we can customize the scene using the realistic style and describe what we want in the text prompt. For example, I wanted to visualize the design logo forming from bubbles in the ocean. And the results were pretty amazing. We can also restore and colorize old photos. Generally, I'll choose a realistic style and provide a simple prompt. To ensure the new image closely resembles your original photo, maximize the structure match, turn off color match, and turn on face match. This way, the result will look a lot like your original photo, but with colors. One super useful application is for architectural or interior design. Let's use this sketch as an example. By choosing the interior category, we can quickly visualize different styles by applying the preset options here. We can also easily transform any image into a coloring book style. Under Light Art, you'll find different styles that are perfect for generating coloring books. Remember to turn off color match so the AI can better create black and white illustrations. We can also easily vectorize the image on Design AI directly. So you can have crisp and clean lines for your coloring pages. Now you can sell them on self-publishing sites like Amazon KDP or create coloring books for your kids or yourself to enjoy. What else can we use this for? Let us know in the comment below if I missed anything. Next up in the Design with AI 101, we'll explore how to generate images for your design. Now give it a try yourself with the link below. Watch our other videos for more AI use cases. Happy designing!